U.S. mortgage rates have remained below 3% for much of the past two months, but the pundits are saying that these ultra-low rates may not be around much longer, and they point to unemployment that has fallen, inflation that is rising, and more people are getting vaccinated. These factors may reflect a healthier economy and in turn may indicate higher mortgage rates may be on the way. So, is time running out on low rates? Well, let's take a look. The average rate on the most popular home loan, which is the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage, rose to 2.99% last week, up from 2.95% the previous week as reported by Freddie Mac. Regardless, rates remain below the average of 3.18% from one year ago. Somewhat surprisingly, Freddie Mac said the 30-year rate will be averaging 3.4% by the fourth quarter of this year. And this may not seem like a big increase, but when you're budgeting for a mortgage payment, the difference is more than noticeable. Even if you believe interest rates are still affordable, the double-digit home price gains of the past several months have pushed the national median listing price to a new record high of $380,000. Many homeowners will need to decide if it makes better financial sense to refinance their mortgage instead of buying another house. So, let's take a look at interest rates, and to do so, we'll take a look at the 10-year rates. What you're looking at here is the weekly chart of the 10-year U.S. Treasury note, and this goes back to about uh, 2007 way back here. So as you can see, the most important thing in this chart that one could take a look at is simply the lower highs all the way down through here. Now, we did have this increase in this time frame here, which is a couple of years ago, but uh, since then, it's really been on a slide downward here with only this recent move upward in, say, the last... Uh, nine, ten months or so to this point here, and then it's starting to slide again, if you can see, just barely starting to slide. So once again, from up here, the general trend is pretty clear. It's on the way down with this anomaly. So looking here below at the MACD, you can see that every time that the MACD, the fast line and the slow line, comes above this level here, which is the 0.2, that level there, when it approached that line, each time it bumped up and then trailed off for, say, a year or so. Again, from this point down here, not quite a year, but low rates continued even though the MAC was climbing. Once we got to that point, back down we went, again, for several years. And up here, now this is the only time that things didn't uh, continue on the downward slide precipitously, but at least it got back up to here and then back down on the slide again through here. And this, from this point here down to here was the March 2020 dive. So you can see that every time we got to this level and we're here once again, that things took a slide for say a year or two. So I'm gonna say that the probability is that interest rates will continue. Now we can move on down here to the slow stochastics and the Williams, and that really isn't going to tell you a lot more other than the fact that from this point here, we have come down as well with the Williams, that topping process, and on the way down. So that to me is foretelling that the interest rates are going to slide further here. And I don't see, looking at this chart, I don't see any evidence that we are going to be 
up to 3.4% or so with mortgage rates, which is different than the 10-year treasury. But the 10-year treasury is tied to a lot of different rates out there, and particularly the mortgage rates. So we topped out at 1.75 here, and I think we're going to continue down, which means to me that interest rates, mortgage rates, will also top out here and tend to move on the way down through the end of the year and perhaps even beyond. So that's just my take. And for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.